Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon Perna, and there's some hot NFL news coming straight off the press. The football team has benched quarterback Dwayne Haskins, which has led to a bunch of people yelling on Twitter that it's because he's black. So we'll talk about that today. Patriots corner Stefan Gilmore tested positive for coronavirus, and all anyone really cares about is whether or not he's given it to Patrick Mahomes. There are people probably already writing hate mail to Gilmore if he did unknowingly pass it along to Mahomes by close talking him after the game. And I think our priorities as football fans are a little messed up, aren't they? Dear Lord Almighty, if you're up there, please, please use your awesome powers to ensure Patrick Mahomes does not get the virus. Here, take my blood as tribute. Take my ability to see as long as you provide a protective shield around Mahomes. And if, if you have time, feel free to make sure Stefan Gilmore is okay too. But only if you're like, not busy. Lots of football stuff to talk about today on That's Good Sports! After you're done subscribing to this YouTube channel, say hello to my ears. Now sponsored by Raycon and the Everyday E25 earbuds. Unlike watching my football team lose in uncomfortable ways, the snug fit of my Everyday E25 earbuds is extremely comfortable. That's a noise isolating fit, which is great for dejected football fans ready to tune out more losses or bad news surrounding their favorite team. In fact, I am now using my Raycons to play soothing music during football Sunday to help keep my blood pressure at a safe level. The tranquilizing notes of the flute can whisk you away to a happy place, courtesy of your everyday E25 earbuds with six hours of playtime. How can you not be happy with that flute in your ears? You can't beat the price of Raycons compared to other premium wireless earbuds, which gets even better when you click my link below for an additional 15% off of your order at buyraycon.com slash that's good. Check it out. Dwayne Haskins has been benched in Washington in favor of Kyle Allen. But wait, there's more. Haskins has also been double demoted as Alex Smith has been named the backup to Kyle Allen. Now, Josh Rosen was trending for me on Twitter because people are now comparing Dwayne Haskins to Chosen Rosen. Here's uh, the Dwayne Haskins timeline as a quick refresher. He was drafted 15th overall by a differently named team with the head coach on the hot seat. That would be none other than Jay Gruden. He played for three head coaches in 13 games. That's always a good thing for young QBs uh, to experience for their growth and expand their horizons. Hey rookies, it's not called not for long league for nothing. NFLLFN is what they always say. And it's also a, a palindrome, just like Taco Cat. Now, Ron Rivera named Haskins the starter, but demoted him from number one to number three after just four games. Haskins has not played well this season, even though his box score stats aren't terrible. He just hasn't been good. And that's probably why his agent defended him on Twitter uh, when these benching rumors started circulating last weekend. People thought Haskins would get benched last game if he played poorly, but his agent quote tweeted Ian Rappaport saying, amazing, this is the narrative coming out of DC. A young QB, 10 starts total over two seasons, who is in a brand new system with no off season in said new system, a young offensive line, limited weapons on offense, and only three games into the NFL season. Yet he is the one that must play well. Now, personally, I sort of agree there. I think you should let the young quarterback play through these growing pains, give him time to develop, especially in this fucked up season. And considering Haskins has had no consistency from the head coaching position, he deserves a chance to develop. But now, now there's a narrative though that Haskins got benched very quickly because he's black and people are citing Daniel Jones and Sam Darnold as examples of quarterbacks given more leeway. Now, I'm not saying that kind of prejudice never happens in the league, and it certainly has a history there, but in this situation, I think it's a reach. 
The Washington football team is coached by Ron Rivera, who is of Mexican and Puerto Rican descent, who coached Cam Newton for nearly 10 years after drafting him number one overall in 2011. I think this has more to do with Ron Rivera not thinking Dwayne Haskins is good than anything else. Every coach and every team is different. The Giants reached for Daniel Jones, so they're all in on him being their quarterback of the future. Ron Rivera did not select Haskins, and I don't think he is loyal to him. You could also argue, though, that the same goes for the Giants with Joe Judge, but let's assume Judge got the job because of a commitment to Daniel Jones, and Ron Rivera got the gig because he was the only person crazy enough to coach in fucking Washington. Again, I support the let Haskins develop method. I think that's the right course of action, but I 100% do not believe Ron Rivera binged him because he's black. And I think if that's the angle you want to harp on on Twitter, you're being disingenuous. Rivera also knows Kyle Allen, and you don't get the nickname Riverboat Ron because you're patient. He's also going through cancer treatment. So unless chemotherapy also kills the cells that prevent you from being prejudiced, uh, maybe Ron has a little too much going on right now to make the best decision at quarterback for his team. And also maybe benching a guy is the best way to get the message through to him that he's not playing good enough to start for your team. Now the Jets and Giants have Colt McCoy and Joe Flacco as their backups, and Joe Flacco's actually starting for an injured Sam Darnold this week. Those teams, though, gain nothing from seeing what either of those guys can do on the field because we already know. Kyle Allen, before regressing in 2019, was playing better than Dwayne Haskins ever has as a pro. At least give Washington the benefit of not truly knowing if Haskins is better than Allen. And hell, if Alex Smith is strong enough to eventually return to the field and play, it will be the biggest comeback redemption story we have ever seen in the NFL. Also, who are the two quarterbacks Alex Smith was benched for and traded for? Colin Kaepernick and Patrick Mahomes, both Last time I checked, black quarterbacks who took over for Smith when he was playing some of the best football of his life. And Josh Rosen, who again was compared to Dwayne Haskins today, was ditched for Kyler Murray, couldn't beat out Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then was ditched for Tua Tungavailoa. At least cite some of the current events that tell the opposite story, is all I'm saying. Haskins right now is playing like a scared Derek Carr, which does not fit Riverboat Ron's coaching style. Haskins is not taking any chances on the field, including situations where your only job is to take a chance. Rivera criticized him for not getting the ball into the end zone on fourth down to give uh, his ball catchers an opportunity when there was nothing to lose. Playing with house money is something a guy named Riverboat understands better than anyone and Haskins just hasn't been doing that. Taking horrendous sacks with players wide open and ranking dead last in intended air yards, those are fair reasons to get benched. He's five of 23 throwing passes 15 or more yards downfield. That's a 23% success rate, while the league average is 48. In conclusion, don't be a race baiter. Be a master baiter. The only person a master baiter hurts is himself but even then the pain usually leads to gratification. I support equal opportunity for everyone. I'm all about progress and fairness, but when you push an agenda with a bad example or misinformation or you blur the context, I think you do more harm than good for the cause. That's what bothers me about this. Also, do not use Jameis Winston as your case study. He was given five seasons to prove himself in Tampa Bay. He finished with an above 500 record once and nearly broke the record for most interceptions in a lifetime. Now, Stefan Gilmore tested positive for the coronavirus. This could really mess things up for the Patriots and Chiefs this week and maybe the following week. Uh, you can see Gilmore whispering sweet nothings into Patrick Mahomes' ear after uh, the Patriots-Chiefs game. 
And even though no chiefs have tested positive yet, I think Gilmore is a good example of how long the incubation period can last before a positive test emerges. But that of course assumes that Gilmore got it from Cam Newton, which we don't know. Uh, Gilmore was one of the people the Patriots put on the uh, infirmary plane to Kansas City as he did have close contact with Cam last week. Now, even though Gilmore was the one who actually tested positive, <laughs> Twitter was primarily concerned about Patrick Mahomes potentially getting it. Oh, how will Mahomes have the strength to shovel the ball to Tyreek Hill in the red zone if his hands are covered with COVID? At this point, the NFL may want to pause the season and or extend the season by a few weeks for makeup games, unless they can teach players how to play football without breathing. That would solve the problem. Patrick Mahomes does have a pregnant wife at home, so I understand the concern. I just lived that scenario, okay? And it sucks. He's been staying away from his wife and sleeping in a separate bedroom, which I respect because my wife did not get pregnant until we started sleeping in separate bedrooms. This shitty Wednesday morning, we also got another Titan testing positive, putting the Bills Titans game in jeopardy and an unnamed Las Vegas Raider catching the bug as well. That doesn't bode well for the Bills on two fronts. And it really is just Buffalo's luck that the one season they're in prime position to finally win the AFC East, God sends down a fucking plague, plague, right? To keep that from happening. Right now, According to Mike Kliss, the Broncos Patriots game uh, set for Sunday afternoon is still on, but don't be surprised if that gets pushed back to Monday night or Tuesday night. Could the Patriots get back-to-back -back Monday night games? Possibly. Outside of players testing positive or more players testing positive, my sympathy has run out for the Patriots now that they're no longer playing the Chiefs. The NFL is also investigating the Titans and Patriots to see if they followed the proper COVID protocols. Uh, if anyone, though, is going to beat an investigation, it's the Patriots and the Titans, whose head coach had a career as a Patriot. We can assume there will be some schedule gymnastics to make things work out. But on the bright side, for the Broncos at least, they might be able to get Drew Locke healthy before the next time they actually play. And finally, it turns out Houston's true hero is still J.J. Watt, who apparently <laughs> helped get Bill O'Brien fired after the two had an argument before last week's game. He rallied the players to support the release of Bill O'Brien, and some say this is more meaningful to the city of Houston and its future than the 40 plus million dollars J.J. Watt raised for relief of Hurricane Harvey. J.J. Watt, today's hero we need. What is Whew. Meaty, girthy episode. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. And if you haven't watched my Bill O'Brien episode, please do. It's one of my favorites.